Welcome back everyone to episode 13 of us playing as the Enclave. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. But the Mole Miners of Farson. Mole Miner Society is simple, communal, and tribalistic. They're also openly hostile to anyone who's not them. Maybe it's this bond they share with the old Enclave that drove them not to attack the soldiers on sight. Maybe it's the fact 200 years of killing everyone and getting nothing in return taught them a lesson or two. Using local translators who somehow speak their language, the American envoy was able to at least get them to conduct trading their resources for food with us. Turns out a lot of them want more than just cave fungus. Interesting to note, the next day when our envoy and team arrived, there was a massive pile of bodies outside their primary mine, and the mole miners were far more eager to conduct business with us. We're just going to pretend we don't know what that was about. We're not all that different. A result of the Great War. Ever since the Treaty of China, scholars and historians look, uh, or took the, uh, or duck, look document the events leading to this day, as well as learning whatever we could about the Democratic People's Empire of China, and that they're not actually the People's Republic of China. While the chase of lineage, culture, infrastructure, and even elements of government from the People's Republic, they are different. Most obvious is the fact that they have an emperor alongside with some feudal style of leadership that's run out of their versions of vaults, which apparently are three times as big as even our largest vault. With all that being said, we've come to a single conclusion. We technically won. Being the People's Republic of China was destroyed in the Great War, and the Chinese Communist Party was destroyed by the marauding U.S. forces, they didn't survive. They're in the United States government. And the former enclave on oil rigs survived the Great War, and returned to reforge the United States on the mainland. Thus, being the PRC ceased to exist, and that the United States continued unbroken through the enclave, we won the Great War, known as World War III. Hooray. Back to back to back World War champs. I want to do that one, but we're going to hooray. That's fan flipping fantastic, my friends. And you might have seen that I just reloaded the game again. So, someone says, uh, next as always, but you promised to get back to Washington, D.C., remember? And fun fact, if you go to the political screen and go down to the Mexico way and press Mexican reclamation, Mexico's free, you'll make a faction with you. Cool. Let's do that at the end, though, just because I want to see that at the end. Oh, and Lake Rocca. I don't feel like waiting for them to go to war with us, so. There you go. Cool. Um, recruitment drive, Legion marches, power the stuff again. Uh, further store cannon, Air Force Base, couriers. It's fine, we're gonna kill them all anyways. It doesn't matter. Mexican Reclamation, Flying Death Clause, Pan American Alliance, <clears throat> Economic Zones, Humanitarian Relief. I don't want to hurt us though. Um, you know what, well, we can do one probably at least. The Great American Melting Pot. And we will do the question of Canada later on. It's flawed often shapes under its own weight, and has a history of problems and probably will for some time, but for the first time in Earth's history, five separate species are living under one nation, with equal protection and most of the time working together for a common goal. <clears throat> a human barters with a ghoul while slandered children play together with wasteland children in the streets. A mole miners pull out ore to supply a construction project manned by super mutants. At the helm of it all, the president sits before the stars and stripes, hoping to have directed the United States to live up to its old credo, have removed the genocidal old ways of the purists and look towards the 2030s with a renewed sense of purpose. All are created equal. Nah. Wait, what? What in the gosh darn why? Oh, that's actually really cool. You just say nah? You can uncomplete focuses? Is that possible? That's actually really cool. Um... Up next, we're gonna do. What are we? What are we gonna do? Maybe the Enclave propaganda, which we read last time. Uh, I just want to see what this is like. The president last night announced the complete eradication of mutants within America's own borders. Last night, hundreds of brave human men and women of the armed forces, FBI, police, and intelligence organizations tore through and eradicated every last mutant from Dago to Seattle, to Denver, and beyond. Citizens were obviously shaken due to the sudden disappearance of friends and family, as well as the large-scale collateral damage that had been reported. The president, however, assured that everything was done in a bid to protect humanity from the mutant menace. The new dawn for all mankind has seen risen over the sun baked shores of the United States. You think I'd break bread with mutants? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, man. Okay, so if you want to read about all these, please go right ahead. What? Unleash a ton of theirs. Human form unmolested is perfect. Wow. That's actually really cool. Securing the Big MT. The Big MT was one of the greatest sites of pre-war research, and rumors of flickering lights on in the night suggested there could be much to be gained from an expedition to its ruins. What's the worst that could happen as we're continuing to them? Oh, well, there goes old believers. Okay, goodbye, old believers. Um, yeah, Northern Light Republic. You're going to die now. The Gateway, huh? Yeah, let's see how long it takes to take them out, too. 
Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. I'm doing okay myself. Just exhausted as always, but uh, that's pretty normal. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Very nice, very nice, very nice. We're going to close out of this. I may or may not have had to reload my game at least once to make sure that we can continue doing this. But it is what it is. Infantry fighting vehicles, very nice, very nice. Democracy's not negotiable. Is there anything else we've not covered yet? Ooh, some of this stuff, I guess, I suppose. And I apologize for my mumbling. I'm like, at the time of this recording, I am... Oh! Pragmatic aviation. Interesting, okay. Exhausted. In my own real life. Completely and utterly exhausted. Beer torpedoes, why not? And they're almost all dead. Here's some Y, sure. Cool, cool, cool. Zala. Well, appreciate it if y'all could go to Zala now. At this point, I don't really need their navy, so we're not going to take the navy this time. Base conference is over. Calculating them, their effects. <clears throat> cool. And here. Uh... There you go. Make it easy on us. Because why not? Why do we want it difficult for us? We don't. Load up with... After the big MT. Navy yards, which read before, naval repair yards. The Navy will train and maintain a series of mechanics. Workshops and crew dedicated to repairing naval ships to get them back in the fight. I've read the Defense Institute of Technology, so if you'd like to read it, please go... Again, please go right ahead. Marine procurement. The Marines won't be forgotten. They'll have their own channels to ensure that the few in Prague get the equipment they need to be Marines. Forward from the sea. The Navy will be continue to protect our shores, our rivers, and our oceans. Behind the rest of the naval industrial might of the New World U.S. Navy. Naval Air Enterprises. The responsibility of the Navy was acquire and arm the plans that our naval marine aviators will not be overlooked. From assault rafts to pirate ships, our ships will have the best planes watching over them. Absolutely, 100%. Have we missed anything else here? There you go. Expedition to the Big Empty. Before the war, one of the greatest centers of R&D was the Big MT. Long thought to be destroyed, whispers of eerie lights in the night at the center of the site inspired an expedition. To surprise, we found a realm of wonders and terrors. Cybernetic enhancements. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Holographic technology and new ca cinema uh, ceramics. But also shambling corpses, robotic. Scorpions and malevolent fauna as the vertebrates descended. As gunners putting down a series of strange individuals in hospital garb and shooting at us, the president must decide what to do with the facility. Be careful, we don't know what the forbidden technology will, will find. The Think Tank, to our surprise. <clears throat> uh, uh, Pre-war scientists have survived in the Think Tank, adopting robotic bodies. Uh, the time has not been kind, of course. And they clearly are insane in the mainframe. While well, most dream of living to experiment in the waste, the one called Mobius uh, has warned us that this will only end in tears. A few suggested that it might be worth supporting their research. There's no stopping progress. Shut them down. Persuade them to stay in the big empty. Why not? A little persuasion can't go can't hurt us, right? And I love economic resurgences. Alright, be aware. It's fine for now. I, I probably said uh, I'd leave it for terrain traits, but oh well. Only a few nations left. Fantastic. All right. Let's see. You guys go here. Uh, you guys go here. And there's only so many nations left. So torpedoes. Oh God. Here we go. Uh, there you go. There you go, and there you go. Okay, oh, we also. Oh, they get by nothing. Oh. 
Naval yards are nice. Naval Air Enterprise is very good, very good. We got him! There's no doubt in our mind that we would. Look at the gigantic United States and Mexico. We just manifest destiny harder in real life and take out Canada for ourselves. I mean, realistically, what are the Canadians going to do with Canada? Beautiful. Link to NORAB. With command and control operations return to work in order, <clears throat> uh, NORAB, we can link them with their systems and hope they'll regaining our nuclear defense network, of course. Uh, what else have we got here? Further through Grand Forks Air Force Base. During the Canadian annexation, Grand Forks served as our eyes in the sky. Keeping tabs on Canadian interlopers and rebels who resisted freedom and democracy. Further store Fort Grafton. Once a National Guard post, the base was rapidly expanded during our uh, annexation of Canada into a true army fort. Because why not? Plasma dischargers? Very nice. Uh. No, we can do use this on, so oh well. Uh, here, do this one. And do that one. New Monroe Doctrine. As the largest power in the pre war, or power in the wasteland, it's duty is to see that the North America remains to be a stable and peaceful land, free from conflict and tyranny, raiders, and slavers. Forward from the sea, the nation will continue, or the Navy will continue to protect our shores, rivers, and oceans behind the rest of naval industrial might of uh, the New World U.S. Navy. Future of the Navy, the Navy following the Great War. Dwindled from the mighty Pacific Fleet to but one carrier and personnel men in the defenses of the rig. When the rig went down, the USS Eagle disappeared and most of the US Navy went with it outside a few who stationed in Navarro at the time. Now the Navy is returned for enforce, ready to tackle maritime threats to America and freedom once more. However, where it is doing what that has become an article of a debate. Fragmentists have pointed out that securing the rivers and waterways of the former United States is what matters most and should focus on prioritizing smaller vessels over large and practical ones. A few are attempting to find common ground in, in uh, oh, many, oh, many hopefuls in the Navy are attempting to restore power and prestige of the pre-war Navy with massive battleships and dreadnoughts and aircraft carriers to sail the oceans green. A few are attempting to find common ground and assume a more well-rounded approach to the situation, able to contain the rivers while also strengthening a position in the open ocean. Issue is being brought another desk of the president to media and effectively choose what path to focus on. Patrol inland rivers. We shall rule the open seas. Let the army handle the waterways and the coasts. The navy's fight is on the open oceans and it will tailor ship production to match this fact. Why not? As we should. Well, it gets to this point. Question of Canada. Oh, Canadian sovereignty is a question of policymakers. Many see Canada as much of the United States as death claws and apple pie. Others argue that they are illegally annexed by a power uh, war-hungry American regime. The debate rages heavily in the Congress, and now also known in America has had apple pie for over 200 years. Well, that sounds down, downright un-American. Excellent reclamation. Our armor forges. Good. If you're running about grease monkeys, please go ahead. Lands the Mexican reclamation zone, so I read this before, so you this, please go ahead. Uh, okay. Sure, why not? Question in Canada. With aid and assistance going to Mexico, there's been a cascade of voices rising from the cold bitter north. Our Canadian brethren in some or others, uh, other circles, Canadrium, often suffer through harsh bitter winters, raider attacks, and the dignity of lacking such things as freedom. As the caravans venture north for better trade and income, 
Have I ever turned worse for wear? With stories of muted horrors, raiders, ghosts, or even just never turn at all. There's still some holdouts of civilization, be they large settlements or tribal hovels. The cost of sending U.S. soldiers to pass by the North proved a strain on our nation when we were at our height before the Great War. A repeat of this affair could break everything we've ever strived for. Several influential members have put forth the Proclamation of Independence for Canada. Turn the lands over to a rightful steward who could guide Canada and its people through the harsh winters as well as maintain the standing security forces needed so we don't have to waste time. Of course, several hardliners are pointing out that Canada's sovereign American land that we annexed in 2072, and this would be seeing territory to a land we rightfully own. Which you do rightfully own it. Give me the audience with Queen Victoria VI. The June 3rd, 2072 declaration stands alone. That's true, yeah. Everything else is nonsense. You gave them everything they wanted over here, so... Yeah, I did promise at some point to go back to DC, but I don't have the submod that works for it, this right now. And I know I'm going to play the Enclave again. I'll probably play it honestly as a purist route um, again, just because I want to. I want to be a purist. But for at Grafton, once known as Camp Grafton, the base was expanded upon as the annexation of Canada to grew hot. After the Battle of the Dakotas, Americans were demanding a second fort to be built to prevent a second Canadian incursion. Given that it was never going to happen since the Treaty of Ottawa was signed three days later, regardless, the army was quick to turn Camp Grafton from a small post to a sprawling fortress. However, the Great War saw it fall into disrepair, and then the place grew infested with rad roaches. Big ones, too. The base is going to be brought, brought back online and will serve as a good northern anchor point for continued operations east. Do we feel the rad roach infestation? I went with Blue Water Navy. Let the army handle the waterways, of course, like we read earlier. My bad. Oh. I figure what we're going to do with Canada here. Go to the political screen and go down to the Mexico way and press Mexican Reclamation and Mexico's free will make a faction with you. But I clicked on that several times, my friends. It's a faction, we can't, and it doesn't let me. Did I do something wrong? Please let me know in the comments below, because, you know, we, this is like the third time clicking this. Oh, maybe form the Pan American Alliance? Well, we can do this anyways. We can try, why not? Release the Republic of the... Re oh, well. Well, I mean, that's a unified power. So if we do this... Republic of the Rio Grande, do they get all of this? Or just the Republic of the Rio Grande? Yeah, all they get is this. And that's not cool. That makes no sense. So... Weird, but... Eh. What you gonna do about Approaching it? the Queen. The city of New Victoria had come a long way since its collapse at the head of the Great War. Many buildings that were damaged beyond repair or demolition were built through the assistance of the royal family. Its skies were often peaceful and its cold nights glowed yellow with the warmth of fire in the homes and buildings. Let allow of the grandeur of the royal palace. Even the dangers of the grave in his broken coast did little damage to the city, with Graven wanting to maintain it for his future use tonight, though. It was shaping up to be another quiet night when the peace was shattered by the roar of vertebrates and thunder of jet engines. Many looked out of the windows to see a trio of vertebrates escorted by American fighter just make the way for the royal palace. Within the palace, the Queen's guard stood by uneasy as President Grant and his escort walked past and into the court of Queen Victoria VI. Out of exchanging titles and greetings, uh, the Queen and the President got on with a meeting that was what it was really for in the reconstruction of Canada. Uh, the President offered the Queen assistance uh, in reclaiming territory as well as technical knowledge and the technological might of the United States in exchange the Queen would agree to administer the lands. Uh, <clears throat> uh, as Canada, she saw fit, stretching from here to Nova Scotia in time. For the Queen, though, it's not like she was becoming a puppet of the United States, of course, and she knew the ancient American ways. America knows nothing of diplomacy. History has shown us that. How do I know you won't march in with an army if I refuse this? Or if I step out of line? I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in diplomacy versus... Well, I'll explore that option. For this route, we'll do the peaceful option, but we'll see. Sins of the past, the Queen sat back here in the President's response. 200 years ago, we were friends, allies, yet when Canada did, did, didn't do what America wanted, our nation was destroyed and those who resisted were executed in the streets. I'll not be the vehicle in which America repeats these atrocities twice. We should have went with a violent option. The President remained calm, no doubt aware of the atrocities committed by the Enclave, let alone the mass genocide that would come under uh, Richardson Sr. Not in towards the Queen, the President made no qualms of the blood on his hands. Nor desire to see those atrocities repeated, let alone the Queen herself be the instrument of that. The President could promise that she would enact no such actions herself, but could not promise future leaders. However, 
Shrewd Granite was quick to point out that the short reign of Victoria's great-great-grandfather, which saw nearly saw New Victoria devolve into raiding and piracy, came to the Broken Coast. Granite wanted to right the wrongs of the past and make something better with it. It's not much, but it's honest work. Queen of the North. The President continued his case to the Queen. The shame that it stained the American flag, the United States had committed atrocities with no recourse, and that culminated in the destruction of the world in the Great War. There's no excuse or recourse that could undo what America had done. The strife and chaos of 200 years, the result of unchecked American aggression. With well, a healthy helping form, the Chinese, of course, but the Chinese weren't here now, were they? But granted, the American president was. Nothing would make up for the past, but it could ensure that all the Canadians who wished to see it uh, better tomorrow, and it would be the Queen who loved them. Queen Victoria VI could be so much more than the Queen of an island in the North Pacific, more than a royal lineage, or she could sit on her island palace and watch the world mo move on without her, and the president would find someone else to do it. Perhaps old Pete from the Dredgers? That got the exact reaction the president won out of the Queen. Your choice, Your Highness. Whoopsie, my bad. Press the wrong button. Ah, why not? Invest. Is it going to be worth it? Probably not, but who cares? Nice. Interlink systems, is that as much as we can do here? Pretty much. We've pretty much done it all. So we saw we can't do anything there. Ah, the Canadian Proclamation. Today, the citizens of Queen Victoria were announced, a new Victoria, were announced to a speech held jointly by Queen Victoria and the President Granite of the United States of America. The United States has given over all Canadian territory to the Queen and her dominion as part of a greater series of programs for the restoration of what the President said were America's northern neighbor. The President spoke on how this won't wipe away the suffering and destruction from the Great War, which the Queen has confirmed, but that was to say it, start normalizing relations between the United States uh, and Canada. Starting today, all Canadian Holdings administered by the United States will be handed over to Victorian officials as part of the reconstruction process mirrored in the United States' own reconstruction authority. Let's end 200 years of violence and bloodshed in Area 27 is next. A physics research center housed in on Area 27, the joint Antacnisside shocks physics experimental research produced advanced weapons just prior to the Great War and will do so once again. Yeah. Oh, is that it? Uh, leader of Dominion Canada. A shattered state. You bet they're shattered. Everything we do? Juarez is a war on gun. Drugs. Now content with running the Mexican Reclamation Zone, Juarez, or Juarez, has begun directing raids against the sea of California and the cartel lands. This would be fine if not. It's not bad if it wasn't for the fact that these raids are crippling some of the armies that stand between Santa Ana and America. What should we do about these meddlesome amigo? What? The world's smallest pit boy playing this world's saddest song. Those who weaken the cartels, the people of Mexico will be pleased. Send some birds to assist. El Vaquero. For some reason, the fate of the Me Mexican reclamation zone has attracted interest from across the waste. A ghoul from New Vegas has come down Mexico way and offered his services. The old gunslinger apparently fought against bandits in Arizona and Mexico in the past and offers his services for the people of Mexico in the fight against Santa Ana. The time was, he was a pretty good shot with a pistol. Huh? Military systems, Canada. Northern Union. Uh... Great Canadian border debate. Now that we've learned it's not pronounced Canadria, we'll come up with another problem. Apparently, this isn't going to be like Mexico. What's more strange? People have up, oh, people have arms up and over about straight lines. Military Citizens Command, Canada, and joint ceremony with members of the Royal Court of Queen Victoria the Sixth and delegates from the United States of America. The President and Queen unveiled the creation of the United States Military Citizens uh, Command, Canada, or MACC. Purpose. Um, let's do that. Of uh, uh, the new commands to train and equip the Victorian uh, Dominion of Canada military for combat and stability operations extending further east. While the trains will be of Canadian descent, much of the equipment will be provided by the United States in this well-developed military industrial complex. The President has urged all loyal Canadians to join for the Queen and Dominion. The Queen herself promised a substantial health care package as well as a pull-out of frontier land upon reaching mandatory retirement age. The event ended with each nation's respective military bands playing each other's national anthem, followed by a court dinner at the Royal Palace in New Victoria. They have done this for Mexico if they asked. Train low. Oh. Northern Union. Uh, train low. Royal Guard. Knightly Order. Dragoons. Commandos. Oh. Are we just straight up annex then? Out of many, one. Oh, they're not a dominion of us, are they? Ranger skips promotion. Oh, they are a pup, though. Granite's originally intended to use the Bob Peninsula as a buffer against Aurelius' Legion and Aurelius' Cito Mexicano. 
and as a dumping ground for Mexican refugees. But it's surprised that people of Mexico have shown the same fortitude that saw them through the countless past disasters. Mexico's uh, a great city is made alive besieged by Santa Ana, but its people have not given up. Resistance to Santa Ana is met internationally. They discuss the struggle for the nation and have issued a proclamation on behalf of free Mexico. It's a little rude as nobody asks first. Semper libre. Oh. Mexican reclamation zone be known as free Mexico. Encouraging Mexican resistance to the United may understand Anna, but would be more inclined to question our goals. And a Baja Blues. Ah. The Anna Baja Blues. Look at that. That's actually really kind of cool. Even though we still own these guys too. Since Free Mexico has devoted itself to well to free Mexico from Santa Ana, there are those who, who wish to push Juarez out of power in favor of someone who opposes the general directly. Skip is willing to step down to compose some great music, but who should lead the resistance? Mexico's heroes are in a deadlock, and our assistance has given us a voice in the councils. Veronica Guerra, the daughter of the generals, leading the candidate, but there may be other options. Guerra knows that if you want peace, prepare for war. Raul Alfonso Tejada. So we'll survive a Hidalgo ranch at your service. So we get intellectuals no matter what. Yeah, so we got free Mexico here. That's cool. State of free Mexico, wow. AS Army Corps. That's cool. The boards are very weird though. We do have a cup of white tea that keeps us nice and warm, though. Two. The Citizens Militia of the Royal Levies, as the Queen's behest, the United States Military Assistance Command Canada has graduated a series of Citizens Militia based off the Royal Levies that provided the general defense and peacetime for the crown of the new Victoria. In these modern times, their purpose is meant to maintain peace and order within the Dominion, as well as provide for the common defense against raiders, criminals, or whatever horde that wanders out of the frozen wastes. Furthermore, it is planned for the levies to be augmented by local woodsmen and wastelanders who are adapt at the local train where the regular royal army would not tread. The first graduates are the models of what is to be based on the future royal Canadian levies, trained and proficient in uh, weapons. Respect for the chain of command and be ready at a moment's notice to defend the dominion from any threat. Or queen of country. Well, we'll see about that. Area 25. Another environmental study in tw Area 25, Rock Valley, studied radiation's impact on the environment and how to combat it. We won't insult anyone's intelligence on how valuable that information is, of course. More whispers? We have lots of whispers of hope, no matter what. Jasper Labs. Jasper was a brilliant experiment using a uh, two-stage high-energy shotgun to achieve uh, shock pressure, temperatures, and strain rates similar to those attained in a nuclear weapon. The test continued well in the 2060s before shut down to allocate funding to the war effort. It was these tests that allowed Bokta Vault Tech to create the vaults and show the rig was capable of surviving a nuclear explosion. These tests ensured America's survival, something their scientists and engineers probably didn't think about. However, our scientists and engineers have noted that the last years of tests used mass driver technology, thinking they, they, they can miniaturize, given enough time, allowing us to hopefully in the future recreate our last Gauss rifles. So I think come with this, make a way for the Royal Guard. The Queen today oversaw the pass and review of the newest line of Canadian Royal Guard. The baseline formations that make up the bulk of the Royal Army, trained and equipped by the United States Military Assistance Com uh, Command in Canada. The Royal Guard continues the traditions of the old Victorian Royal Army, however. Unlike the often corrupt and sometimes unreliable patronage system put in place by Queen Victoria the Sixth Grandfather, the system is mirrored of the defunct NCR Army. A more organized regimented system of meritocracy that saw the NCR become the dominant military in the region through the latter half of the 2100s and most of the 2200s. The Royal Guard's duties will be securing the frontier and fighting in battle to defend the Queen's sovereignty and right of dominion over the Canadian lands and have the whole nation at their backs. Propatria. Establishment of the Royal Commandos and the right of the Royal Dragoons. The, United, uh, the U.S. Mac, C, and top Royal Army commanders oversaw the pass and review of Canada's Royal Dragoons. Motorized infantry meant to rapidly deploy in the frozen wastes of the Canadian North. The still forest of Canada will once again hear of the rumbling of engines as the Royal Dragoons prepare for the push west, backed by the full might of the Royal Victorian Government. Audox X. Cellar. Military, or Mac, C. Special Operations Group today led presented was known as the Queen's Blade, the Canadian Royal Commandos. Trained by scavengers, rangers, and given the best schooling in an asymmetrical warfare by the U.S., these commandos will be launching delicate high-stakes missions against the enemies of the Canadian Crown, as well as assisting regular troops in battles, sharpshooters, and scouts similar to the NCR Rangers of the former NCR. After a speech made by the Queen, putting the faith of her dominion in them, the commandos were whisked away to parts unknown, beginning a new chapter of the Great Northern War. All demas, and they shall. Not bad, I can't speak that correctly, apparently. Area 6. A power experiment that was greatly funded before the Great War that researched Paul's power, which could have some post-war benefits. 
uh, new knightly order. The streets of New Victoria were awash with bell tolls and patriotic music as the royal sovereign of the New Victoria herself knighted the graduates from the United States Military Assistance Command. These knights were mirrored slightly off the pseudo knightly organization that roamed the former U.S. However, where those knights were often were self-serving, these will have the weight of the Victorian domain of Canada on their power armored shoulders as they marched east. The end day ended as the newly minted knights marched through the streets of New Victoria, awaiting ships to be transported to the mainland for combat operations against those who face off against the Queen and her dominion. Nam Regina. So I can't give him North Cooper, can I? Probably I can, right? No, I can't. Huh. There's Coover. And then there's North Coover. That's weird. So maybe it's a bug, maybe? Because now that we're, we can't do anything, it just can't be done. Yeah, so. I don't know. But Rock Valley. Pre-war, the military began conducting research into what exactly a post-nuclear environment would essentially be. Then around Area 25, the facility created a, ran a series of underground tests that replicated real-world environments and then doused them in radiation to discover the results. While seemingly destructive and fruitless tests, the Great War proved the naysayers wrong. The data recovered from the site has allowed us to put the recommendations into practice, allowing our ships to better operate in the various scarred environments we find ourselves in. Wait, how do they protect my lyrics? How would they know? Well, we may never find out. Northern Guardian, her eyes in the sky in the Great North. From Grand Forks, the, United the Air Force launched around-the-clock recon missions, first against the Union, Soviet Union in the 20th century, and against the Chinese movement in Alaska as the resource wars dragged on. It also had the secondary objective of keeping an eye on Canadian rebels who had attempted to divert attention away from the communists in China. The base took a few direct hits in the Great War, but much of the underground bunker remains intact, and the base has returned to full operational capacity once more. And now the strike package ready. Open the hangars. The hangars at Area 51 contain some of the more advanced aircraft we ever produced. If we could just get in those darn things. We're starting the Big MT. Now that we've dealt with our original inhabitants, we can turn the Big MT towards the Enclave's research. Please note that calling it the Big MT or the Big Full will result in a firing squad. Area 23. The central housing and command point for the Nevada test site. Securing and locking this place down would allow for a safe and sustained city for most of our gifted scientists and their families. Area 22. A training set for the Army. Uh, uh, for operations in a nuclear and post nuclear battlefield, which is exactly what we need right now. And then Area 5. A no nuclear weapons testing and assembly site, the home, home domain production center, the M42 Fat Man. The man from Cedar. There's one officer amongst the ranks claiming to be from the ever enigmatic and now defunct Enclave Intelligence. He says he cares little for politics and only wants America to be restored to its former glory. Don't we all? I think that'd be fantastic. We've got a lot of focuses here to finish off, though, still. And a lot of events still. What was this? Cold feet? The direction of the construction of Hidden. Uh, independent. Safe house in the field allows to field more spies. Enclave Sigma. Well, Cloak and Dagger's nice. America needs to take direct action against our foes. We're going to have any hope of defeating them, and we know just who to use. Legacy of the DIA. This intelligence colonel avoided the destruction of the rig by leading an expedition to the ruins of Fort Huachuco. He says he's chasing reports of a joint project between the old Defense Intelligence Agency and the Defense Advanced. Uh, research and Projects Agency. Furthermore, he says while well, he's chasing here, uh, is here in Nevada, we looked over the documents and there's something to them. Opening the hangars. There will be rumors and whispers amongst the troops over what exactly would be in those hangars and what we would find. And a, sh a few shifted uneasily in their power armors as the engineers cracked open the old rusted doors. Even a few officers stood in easy as they creaked open. Before them, before their word eyes, was a flight of pre-war nuclear fighters. A bit anticlimactic. This repeated itself as the engineers opened each door to the base, resulting in the pre-war fires that had been sheltered for the better part of centuries laying there, ready to be refurbished and restored like so much else. Area 51 was the center of our advanced aircraft programs, and of course, the service hangars held actual aircraft. So we could cut, we could return the planes to service, or scrap them for a production boost for fighters with the spare parts. I mean, yeah, scrap them. Uh, get those planes in the air now. Uh, go and scrap them, it's fine. Area 22 is next, too. Map of Cedar. 
Oh, Clave Intelligence, where do I begin? Is it their failure to protect a tribal from Morgan will blow up the rig? Their secretive ways aren't subject to oversight. Their removal of officers or politicians that they deemed a threat. Or maybe it's a fact they were one of the few Enclave organizations that nepotism didn't exactly pan out, thus creating the stigma they now deserve. Regardless, many thought Enclave Intelligence died with the rig as their officers and operatives hadn't been seen in over 30 years now, however. That was until Colonel Callahan arrived at Sierra Armor Depot holding the correct credentials and speaking about plans to reinvigorate the greatest intelligence apparatus in the post-war era. This charisma must be maxed out because a lot of people are listening. Sure, but what's a cedar? Wait, what? That city in uh, Iowa? Cedar Rapids? Cedar? Cedar? Cedar Rapids? Cedar Rapids. Colonel Callan becomes an advisor. Great, and in Enclave Intelligence. Fantastic. Rubicon, huh? Listening into enemy signal traffic will allow us to track how close they are getting to our operatives, allowing us to deploy more. Merlin. Uh, feeding false information to enemy counterintelligence can lead them chasing ghosts and phantoms in the wasteland. Hurts their description quite a bit. Azorium. Uh, deep undercover, uh, deep cover agents and connections across the wasteland has allowed our agency to be vast superior to anything else since the Great War, and are laying the groundwork for peaceful restoration of American law. Red Team. Our enemies rest happy that their commanders will be leading their armies to victory. Be a shame if one of them died. Well, that's the ability to target enemy organization and structure, degrading their ability to fight them from the front line, the blue team. Our enemies have spent years rebuilding laughable mockeries of America's great infrastructure. Dedicated sabotage teams delivered by Vertebrae can remind them that they aren't dealing with an ordinary wasteland nation, but a superpower. Camp Desert Rock. During the ancient Cold War, the growing resource wars, the U.S. military knew it was going to be operating in a nuclear scarred battlefield. How right they were. Tactics deployed and developed here were instrumental in allowing our forces to instantly dominate the wasteland when we first arrived back on the mainland. However, the test did not account for lack of numbers, which is what led to the fall of Navarro after the rig went down. Today, however, the site is being repurposed to serve a new group of soldiers and to better prepare ourselves for continued combat in the post-nuclear environment. 200 years of natural development as well has ensured, the, ensured this fact. Just keep an eye out for Wanamingos. Oh, absolutely. A Sigma Special Forces branch decision. Oh boy. White team. Truck launch biplanes, rocket bombers, and the occasional monoplane make up the mass, vast majority of the post war Air Force. Targeting these laughable excuses for air power increases our efforts to a tight grip on the command of the sky. It's Enclave Sigma. At the all inside of the Great War, the Enclave secured away what few elite forces and special black ops teams under the Reagan in secure bases on the mainland. However, the rivalry between the various units surrendered to tear the Enclave apart, forcing the President at, at the time to reform them all under one single command, uh, Enclave Sigma. An elite direct action force was at a culmination of over 200 years of special forces doctrine and development. Since the rig's destruction, many who didn't die on the rig at Navarro or on the rig at Navarro fled east, and those who did are now old and aging. Yet the knowledge remains, ready to train future generations. Uh, perhaps it's starting to reinstate the most elite soldiers who ever walk up the waste, uh, or walk the waste. Perhaps starting a course with which team should be stood up first. Blue, just because it's my favorite color. And then Red Mountain. The colonel was correct. We're getting power fluctuations for what was known as the Red Mountain Research Facility, now known to the Rangers as Outpost Mesa. Oh, we can't do purity here. Green team. We don't have any large quantities. Our stocks of FEV are rising, and with it, we can deploy it over our enemy lands, kill the population, and destroy the militaries. Nice. That's really cool. Red Mountain. And then excavation can begin. It's clear that Rogue Rangers have no idea what they were squatting over, what wonder of the old world lay just beneath their feet. Time to return it to America. The Cochise machine. A series of data inputs, variable algorithms, and prediction logs. Some might call it an AI, others a calculator, perhaps. New Monroe Doctrine. Yeah, I think I heard this before, but as the largest power in the West ends, our duty to see that North America remains a stable and peaceful land. Free from conflict and the tyranny of raiders and slavers. Mexican liaison. Mexico has suffered hard under the rule of a robotic god, and now that they have their feet again, we'll bring them in the spirit of the mutual aid and defense. Canadian liaison. We cannot leave our northern dominion of Canada ignorant of the threats of the West and will make steps to bring them in. Mercury. Operation Center. Well, not exactly Los Alamos or Area 51. The uh, Mercury, Nevada sits just north of the Mercury Pass, a major caravan route via a north route to New Vegas. The closed city was built by the Atomic Energy Commission as well as over 300 years ago and the main competitor for the Big MT, the massive defense research think tank in the region, regardless. Uh, the city was locked down via robotic guards pre-war, which kept many at bay from the site, but that isn't a problem when you have government access codes. 
With a town under our control, our scientists and engineers are welcoming the change from the stealthy Fort Sierra, where they've made their home in these past few years and have felt themselves a renewed sense of discovery and drive. Sometimes all it takes is a change of scenery. Hey, here we go, finally. Further store cannon air force base. Oh, I guess we did ask these guys. Crap. Well, crud. Look at us, Canada. We tried, man. Can't wait till the moment of the wasteland's filled out. Look at all the things we've got here. My god. Guard, Marine Corps, Dreadnought, Lighthouse Corps, Old World Warfare, Legacy of the DIA. Pre War, the Defense Intelligence Agents became the premier in the U.S. security operations for predicting the moves of the Chinese, establishing safe houses for operatives for after the war. The DIA even accurately predicted the Great War, which allowed the progenitors of the Enclave to retreat to safety to continue the American dream. Now, however, its legacy is in shambles, picked apart by the vultures who do not know what they're standing on. One such example here is in Nevada, and Colonel Callan is taking his entire life that what is rest under Red Mountain is more than worth for the President and America, so long as it prevents another rig. Well, it means killing mutants. Fortress America. America will be defended, America will be protected, America will remain free. Behind every window, behind every blade of grass, there shall be an American willing to fight. Let our enemies sink to us before they try and take Fortress America. Link to NORAD. With command and control operations return to working order NORAD, we can link them with the guards or systems in Hopefelt, regaining our nuclear defense network. The nuclear question. The world was scoured in nuclear fire. What is more, America nearly died in a second nuclear blast that destroyed the rig. The question now is, what do you do with our nuclear arsenal? Probably do a nuclear disarmament. Dis may we never have to use these weapons again, and may we send them to do the dustbin of history. Early warring systems. With our centralized command and control, we need to be ready for whatever the wasteland throws at us in the future. Over the horizon, powerful radar systems will be able to detect incoming threats far and above what the normal wasteland is able to achieve versus shielded skies or shielded sights. Our radar remains vulnerable, for not the occasional bomb glider, but to sabotage as well. We should take stock to better defend radar as much as possible in National Recon Office. A lesser-known federal agency, the NRO, was in charge of all um, satellites pre-war. With the return of the USSA, the NRO will resume operations, building a better picture of what the world's like post-war. What lies beneath? The Rangers had no idea what they were sitting on. Uh, the massive fortified bunker and the wonders that were within, in their ignorance, and with the help from the sands of time. The facilities have fallen into disrepair, however. The re readings of power from the lower levels have means something is still operating down there, and Colonel Callahan is more than sure that whatever lies down below exactly is what he's been looking for. Get to digging. Oh, that was fast. Nice. Coaches AI, huh? Get all these to do. I've read these ones before too. Air Production Command. While we have done all we can to keep our planes in the air, we still need to produce new ones as our Air Force expands during their push east. Air Technician School. A dedicated facility where the Air Force will train techs who will keep our planes in the air, converting, covering everything from basic maintenance to full spectrum service of a nuclear engine. Air Futures Command. We well, regain with it what the pre-war had. It's not enough. The Air Force will continue to look forward and set up the necessary steps to continue to lead the world in aviation innovation. Elephant Walk. To demonstrate our new Air Force capabilities and the power behind it, we'll conduct something we haven't been seen in over 200 years. An Elephant Walk. Oh, interesting. Because other than that, this is all this that's left here. I guess next up we'll probably do Area 5 after uh, the Cochise AI. Just before the outset... Uh, outset of the Great War, the DIA created a predictive anal analytic machine, a sophisticated AI that the, was a pinnacle of the analysis AI, however. Pan was lost in Boston, it's going to be a while before we get back. Colonel Callahan, however, has been chasing his predecessor, the poorly named Mass an Analytics Terminal. While it's not an AI, the basis of the design went on to improve inspire the Zax computer and Pan, which is that of what led the device to be mothballed. 
The machine can perform hundreds of calculations a second, from a battlefield data to encrypted radio broadcast. Now it's back in the hands of the rightful American government, and is ready to think and once again defend America. And with this, we hold the future of America in our hands. Wow. Love it. Who lives to tell your stories? Well, <clears throat> I'll get through the entire book sheet before we click on that. Cool. Area 5. I want to set the world on fire. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, after that, we pretty much got them all done. Oh, I keep forgetting about enclave propaganda. What is wrong with me? I guess we can't do this one. You're not anti communist. Or has communism paranoia? Cause of the Great War. Well, I guess if we do have to read about it, you know, it is what it is. Wow, 45 days is a long booty time, not gonna lie. I like these 15 day ones. They're very nice. They're very, very, very nice overall. Cool, cool, cool. I want to set the world on fire. Well, yeah, I'm 42. Oh, crap. Come on. Stupid auto saving. Um, it was developed and tested at Fort Strong from the East Coast. The main production center of the weapon was contained in Area 5 at the Nevada test site. After securing the site, uh, the M42, our, our data archaeologists managed to recover the schematics and plans for the M42 and its corresponding ammo. Now, we have now access to this pre war uh, treasure of a weapon and can put it in production immediately under the aircraft tab. Once sufficient numbers are built, we can arm them in decisions by use of our commanders and battle plans or through any spy missions. We will soon have to learn what space a real superpower. Oh, nice. Well, we'll see. What is the Enclave exactly? That's a question I've heard many times since setting up shop in New Reno. What exactly is the Enclave? Well, it's the American government, hidden safely way off in a vault or coast. Um, the Enclave worked tirelessly over the nations, or worked tirelessly until the years, until a terrorist attack destroyed their dreams of recreating this great nation. There's those who say the Enclave took this fatal blow to never return its armies and people burning in nuclear fire. I'm here to tell you that this is ridiculous. You can't kill a dream no more than you can kill America, so long as a dream lives on in the hearts and minds of America, so will the enclave. That to you is my promise. This is your presence signaling, signing off. All right, I think that worked. What do you think? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, however, there's a scheduling conflict. You can choose which broadcast to record next. Bring up the one about social programs. This recruiting ad seems nice. Social programs it is. Thank you, NORAD. And it would be good. Ashton Hope built to no red line. Is next. Cool. And three days left, which is very, very good. As NDOC mission expands, a direct link to the NORAD com command center has been established. NORAD's early warning systems and greater access to classified pre-war nuclear information will go a long way in keeping America safe from the threat of pre-war nuclear weapons falling into the wrong hands. This is also allowed for NORAD to take stock of what nuclear weapons we have recovered, creating a backup site in case NDOC is taken offline. They've also begun monitoring Chicago, though most information coming out of the enclave-controlled city is scarce the best. That just leaves one final question. Whoops, I didn't even click this one, but whatever. Spirits of Hope. Uh, I think we have enough stability as is, but it's fine. Out in the cannon. Part of the former Air Force Special Operations Command, Cannon Air Force Base served in the same capacity as Dias Air Force Base and operating in America's tropical backyard. Deploying surveillance aircraft and special forces units to quickly respond to communist terrorists and occasional smuggler before the Great War, maybe it was this lack of focus towards China that saw the base spared much of the nuclear bombardment that befell Texas. Regardless, Enclave Sigma is ready to deploy several teams out of Canada Air Force Base and bring it to operational capacity as we continue east, of course. Send them in anytime, anyplace. 
forever vigilant. In pre-war, the United States had a series of powerful radar arrays positioned around the country. It allowed for early warning of incoming Chinese bombers and missiles. Uh, it was the very same sites that detected the birds in the air that was relayed to NORAD. <clears throat> well, we don't expect another dastardly communist attack. We don't know what was beyond our borders. Sea traders from the south tell the Inca and the war fleets. Then there's the Chicago threat. Last year, there's no tell what became of Europe. We've identified several former sites for reconstruction, and teams are standing by to radio your work when needed. Let's get to work. Lock decisions to repair various phase RRA warning systems across the continent, huh? Oh, crap. Oh, that's cool. Look at all these radar stations. Black Mount Radar Array. This old satellite tracking station took a hit in the northern Nike occupation, but we can repurpose it to our needs, which we will. No radar array. Ugh, radar array. Unlike pre war, threats exist in the American heartland, and no rad must be ready for any of them to come to it. Corpus Christi and B radar array. The remains of Corpus Christi Naval Base, now core of the corpse, still remains of a massive radar array that washed over the Gulf of Mexico. Fruits of our labor. After several months of testing and design, we managed to miniaturize a Jasper testing system down to welcome carried by a common infantry man. In short, we've re uh, learned Gauss weaponry. Well, it's going to take us some time to redevelop the weapon systems that we once carried into battles, a massive step forward in regaining our technological edge against our enemies. We've come full circle in project weapons. Fantastic. I guess we do have space here to research more stuff if we really wanted to. Mass drivers, why not? Anything else? No, we even had Mark uh, 2, Power Armor 2. Uh, also, we have been going through with the cybernetics. We did do, should we? Since the beginning of the program, we strive for the implants to be completely seamless and integrated within the human body, making it augmented indistinguishable from human, but this is limiting us severely. We could go to much greater lengths to attain much higher heights, and if only we wouldn't be restricted. So, even considering this would massively damage our reputation, but if we can attain in the next stage in human evolution, should we not take the risk? Which doesn't make any sense for us to do, but we're going to do it anyways in this campaign. Cybernetic war form. The disregard for even the most basic human rights, as well as the sanctity of its, of its form, let us go far beyond all that our previous experiments. With no restriction, we can chop off entire limbs, organs, or even huge chunks of the torso, and replace them with an even more efficient mechanical alternative. No thoughts were given to making subjects able to live a civilian life after this, but is it that important, really? It's what the mind wipe is off, or anyways. Schneikies. Seriously, this is a very bad idea. Very, very, very bad. Why not? We'll see what it's like. Can't be that bad, can it? Can it? Uh, mini nuke batches, readied artillery barrages. Very nice. Elephant walk, of course, too. I do kind of want to see what this happens, though. 85 days? What do you mean it's a bad idea? Absolute nonsense, you know. Yeah, we got a lot of good stuff around here all over the place. A lot of compliance. Resistance is all pretty much nothing. An elephant walk. Residents near Edwards Air Force Base were treated to a rare sight that hadn't been seen in 200 years. An elephant walk. While many are wondering what exactly an elephant is, many are associating with something to do with flying, given that the fact the Air Force used the term. This new conundrum aside, the Air Force proudly displayed dozens of the newest aircraft at the base, along with a large formation of over 100 new pilots ready to serve in the restored Air Force. Pictures have even uh, been circulated far and wide, and Air Force recruiters have become inundated with the request of commission to be able to fly. An elephant's uh, nose, the thing with a nose, right? But what does this have to do with the elephant? I couldn't tell you. Tool machinery? More nukes? No resistance everywhere. Everyone loves America. Nice. Gigantic, my boys and girls. Oof. I've never chosen this one. Standard wages. This destroys it, and this will d greatly increase the cap expenses. But way more army XP gain, division experience gain, max training, special forces, and multiple capacity multiplier. Yeah, so that stuff is all done right there. National Recon Office is next. Then we got our porn is good. Enclave Academy of Virtual Realities. Eh, actually. This is better to do. Why teach soldiers about the ba battles of the past when we can have them live it? The defense of Anchorage captures Shanghai and the Battle of Navarro. However, there will be a difference between the real life and VR, but we can overcome that in time. Drinking, this one's okay. Seven, eight. 
gives you better training levels and slightly less organization, but virtual reality. Pre-war, much of America's spy satellite network was overseen by the National Reconnaissance Office. Before the Great War, we caused all of our great technological advancements to go awry. The entire United States satellite network was controlled by the single intelligence agency. Working alongside the U.S. Air Force and the U.S.S.A., the NRO built and maintained every intel satellite in space, from Freedom View to the Eco Eye platform. Now, with Bloomfield under our control, we can begin to work to not restore those old systems, but to rebuild newer and better ones in the future. Wow, for now we can get Freedom View online, the future's looking bright. Contact the U.S.S.A. Red team, white teams, Rubicon, we'll do all those. Uh, because after that, we still have no rad. Or the nuclear question, I guess. We already read no rad. And we still got to restore the big MT, too. My god. Yeah. May we never have to use these weapons again, and may they send them to the dustbins of history. Maintain the nukes. We cannot be so naive to think that one day we'll encounter an enemy that won't be kind to us as we are to them. That's very true, too. The nuclear question is next. Creator Nevada test site. How much organization does our normal Enclave Power Armor Division get? 358, over 200 organization, dear god! That's insane. Recovery rate's good. Recon, supplies is not bad. A bit average reliability is okay. Has any nation with implant technology research cybernetic warfare? Wow. The nuclear question. Douglas Grant had a decision before them. Now one sees the Truman first gave the order to start of this long circus show. NDOC and NORAD were covering nuclear weapons left and right, but the question on the many lips was whether they armed the bombs or destroy them. Many argued that the myriad of threats in the wasteland from Chicago to beyond necessitated the need for nuclear weapons. Who knows when we would come across a threat that a soldier in power armor and rifle couldn't handle. Others weren't, uh, were against using the same weapons to end the old world. Point out that eventually there will be no time when the idea of using nuclear bombs would be, seem palatable. Just like the onset of the Great War, and we should have we would have learned nothing, you know? Well, the President's desk set two executive orders, drafted up by staffers, and left for the President to ponder over what to sign, and decide the fate of the Wasteland's future. Uh, dismantle a nuclear arsenal, bring it online. Well, let's do that one. So, let's let time go on. These guys, so we have infantry. We have marine infantry, which is fantastic. And fire teams for the Marines, and marine demo teams, fantastic as well. I love it a lot. I'd love to use them, but just to get them so late, there's no point to use them, especially after we have power armor. We have robot platoons. That's uh, how it's outpaced man's restraint. We, what have we done? Uh oh. Something went wrong. We can't so explain quite why, but something is just not going properly with our interfaces. What previously had been a boonder industry now causes workers to fake for fatigue far quicker. Let's hope we can reach proper industry outputs again. Games interface fatigue. Oh god. For 90 days, that's not good. Special platoons, of course, like normal. Super means are there. Mobile platoons. So we have vertical companies, which is fantastic. Just awesome. Of course, we have tanks. Bird to bird or verti demo companies. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then verti uh, fire team companies, too. Motorized infantry, mobile warfare, or mobile fire teams. And then war forms. Walking recovery. Insane defense. 100 HP, my god. So what if we wanted to do with these guys as... Remove one. And of course we'd be behemoths here too. So if you do that and replace that with that, you get armor as well. Instead, I love these vert uh, assault companies. 25 more HP and 33% more what? Initiative? Holy crap. The insane HP. Initiative does go down, which does suck. But just so much more there. My god. Slander Scout Company, of course. Marine Detachment. Slander Cavalry Corps. Oh, we have the Knights here too, huh? Holy crap. So you can see Scribes. 
mobile logistics, white team, a lot of the normal stuff. But seeing it, so it's, the options you eventually can get is just fantastic. I love it a lot. PA division. Oh, what is this? Restore the Blue Castle nuclear power plant. Eh, it's all right. Oh God. Uh, Kirkland Alamos Al 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 nuclear production center. Warren Air Force Base Silos. Minnow Air Force Base Silos. Barksdale, Kitsap, Lawrence Livermore, Secure Pantex at any cost. Oh god, how much more reading do we have to do? Jesus Christ. I thought we are done for the most part with the reading. My god. We've got a lot of reading to do then. There's Rubicon here. Because after this, I think this is it. I would love to be able to finish every single focus here. Because I'll be honest, at the time of this recording, I'm exhausted completely. But I'm no quitter. Usually, oh my god, 43 days. Holy good fathers. That's a long time. Holy shnikes. Oh, he gave me more of this too, huh? Well, well then, uh, I guess we gotta get rid of more dogs. More mini nukes. Zoom in and speed things up, maybe. I don't know, I don't think that really works that well, but whatever. Secure Kirkland Nuclear Weapons Center. Or, uh, what was once the Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center survived the 200 years relatively intact. Of course, bombs that hit the area damaged much of the base in the intervening 200 years, and a dry and arid desert has done little to damage it further. A couple of the automated defenses meant few scavengers picked up the base apart. Those defenses thankfully answered to our codes, and after the Air Force secured the facility, NDOC teams moved in to begin restoration of the base itself. As per executive order. The facility is being restored and a tool for nuclear disarmament. The weapons and integration technology of the base is more than capable of dismantling any nuclear weapons we come across in the wasteland. NDOC technicians are already overhauling the base as we speak and creating a direct route from the airfield to the facility when we find any errant nuclear weapons. And Landis was sitting on this? We're capturing Los Alamos. Suffice to say, we're a little shocked to discover a colony of ghouls living at Los Alamos, many of who are remnants of the research scientists and military guards there. While the research into born ghouls is frightening, NDOC wishes to return the facility to working order, more particularly finding ways to combat radiation from a myriad of nuclear materials and systems across the wasteland. Several of the ghoul scientists left have wished to come aboard, of those who obviously can't stay in the facility. A noble goal indeed, or an Air Force uh, base. Uh, they're silos though. We gained control of the silos of the Warren Air Force Base, lo and behold, they're empty. Warren was one of the few bases that never received the automated production silos, as it was scheduled for early 2078. Thus, with the missile spent, the base remains dormant for 200 years. And DOC is set to demolish the silos, as well as eradicate their plans and fall in with nuclear disarmament. However, the lower tunnels are infested with feral ghouls and will be providing difficult to uh, clear out. Once they're done, though, charges will be set and the base will be turned over to the Air Force in full for continued push east. We destroy the world with these. White Sands Research Center. White Sands, the place where it all began when humanity came into a fork in the road and took the path that led to some of the greatest inventions in history and led us down the path of the Great War. While nuclear testing on American soil was drawn down in the lead up to the Great War, White Sands took on another purpose, researching what combat would be like on a radioactive battlefield. Some of this data was used by our predecessors, but the bulk of it was left behind due to the enclave's focus on small units' operations now, with this under our control. We can put much of this data to use, at the same time, NDOC, so haven't secured the place from certain crazy religious groups who apparently worship the Trinity site. Why would you worship what destroyed us in Barksdale Depot? We fear the worst upon arrival at Barksdale Air Force Base. 200 years of Louisiana will do hell on any structure, while we try to pry the depot doors open. We found them largely empty, save for a few scattered shells of nuclear bombs. The lack of bombers meant that everything was thrown onto the bombers, and then they were sent off to bomb the Chinese mainland. We know the war lasted roughly two hours in the United States. We can only imagine what went through those pilots' minds as they flew over the Pacific to China delivering their payload on what was a one-way trip. We hope they found peace in the end. Empty, spent, and empty destroying the world. The power of the atom and Minnow. We've heard rumors of a great cell in South Dakota, and it was worse than we feared. Not only were the cells at Minnow Air Force Base still ready, the place had become an irradiated glowing sea after a series of crazy religious nuts took the place over. They were ordered off federal property, but instead they started shooting at us. Much of the base remained secure, but the underground tunnels were another story. Many of our brave soldiers perished from removing them from the lower base tunnels. Aside from the main weapon literally shooting radiation, they set booby traps and ambushes that saw dozens of our soldiers irradiated and left to die. When the technicians finally got to the automated defense on defenses online, the fight became easier, though the units went through four months' supply of right away and Red X in just a few days. And DOC will say it will clear the place out. And for the time being, the solids are offline until the radiation is cleared out. What is it with these people? Malmstrom secured. After initial fighting of the tribe that occupied the base was finished, 
and DOC technicians moved in to secure the nuclear silos on the base. Malum Storm was in the middle of the automated nuclear tests or nuclear systems upgrade when the bombs fell, as uh, very, such very few were active. Fortunately, that means there's a few number of nuclear warheads still hanging around underneath the complex after the teams cleared out the feral ghoul infestation. And DOC began locking down those silos as well as dismantling the automated systems that were making more nuclear warheads. Once this is done, the silos will either be demolished or turned over to the Air Force, who have, done, who have plans to turn the silos into hydroponic farms given the hostile train of Montana. Well, no human cuts were found, right? Lawrence Liverpool National Labs. The LLNL, Center on the Safety, Security, and Reliability of America's Nuclear Weapons, as such, NDOC has a large interest in the facility. None the least of which became the data stored here will has wide reaching applications to NDOC's mission. Primarily the safe and secure storage of nuclear weapons and how we can better dispose of them. One of LLNL's primary missions just before the bombs drop was how to disable nuclear weapons, something that would be pretty pertinent if anyone came across an undetonated nuclear bomb, the Enclave on the rig, didn't see the information as useful as they would just blow it up, however. We're no longer the Enclave on the rig, and the NDOC will put this information to greet use should we find any. How comforting. Pantech secure. Hidden away in Amarillo. Pantex was hit hard by nuclear weapons, and much of the base became an irradiated hellhole after the war. However, the pre-war government knew this, and much of the base's facilities were removed underground with help from vault sadly. The cause of false alarms meant no one heeded the warning until the first bomb hit Amarillo, and the rest was history. While the surface was largely scoured, underneath it was only irradiated, and we can fix that easily as such. It has become the most important site for NDOC capture, our priority one target list on the list since the command's inception. Pantex was a primary nuclear weapons assembly and disassembly facility, and as such would become the new home of the Nuclear Defense Operations Command. Given its purpose to disable nuclear weapons, NDOC plans to refurbish and upgrade the base to further dismantle any and all nuclear weapons we find, given that there's only a finite number left in the wasteland. It plans to turn the base into a command and control center where it could be coordinating better than its current center in National Air Force Base. It's NDOC's hope that the Pantex disassembly systems will be shut down for good and we'll never have to use nuclear weapons again. Maybe we can clean up this planet and get to that nuclear storage. The Pacific Fleet submarine was the cornerstone of the Navy's contribution to the nuclear triad. At any t given time, the 13 nuclear or ballistic nuclear submarines were stationed off China's coast, and the Kitsap supplied every last one of them. When the NDOC technicians pried open the storage doors, we found a few dozen nuclear warheads laying in wait. Having survived the hellish cold of Washington, most were so badly decayed they were radioactive ice balls. Regardless, the NDOC recovered all of them, and the cursory assessments show that you can build a few functional bombs out of these. A horrifying thought. Knowing who controlled this area not too long ago, the Navy and NDOC are beginning procedures to dismantle both the bombs and the storage, closing the chapter of nuclear destruction once and for all. Good thing the Brotherhood never got Those these. Those who lives dies to tell your story. And so the sun rose over the new world, and so the North American wasteland watches the old world emerge with the new. The wastelands remained forever changed as the specter of the United States rose from the ashes of the Great War and laid claim to the continent once again. Granted, the son of an enclave better and the hero of a royal had taken the enclave, and with it, the dream of it to restore America. But what became of it? Did Granite live up to the ideals of the Founding Fathers 500 years ago? Or did he forge a brave new America in the face of this dangerous world the, the United States found itself in? It was worth it, the fate of ghouls. The ghouls were often treated as outsiders within New California and the rest of America. Some were treasured for their pre-war skills or pity for their deformities. Others were feared due to the possibility of going feral, and with the coming of the Enclave, ghouls were integrated into civil society once and for all. Ghouls helped America grapple with its history for better or for worse. The fate of Dornan. With America saved, Dornan resigned with honors and retired to the Strip, developing cocktails which used Nuka-Cola as a mixer. Dornan's bar, the oil rig, would become one of the hottest bars in New Vegas, although there were several HR complaints about his reaction if staff were caught out of uniform. Patron the Mojave almost makes you wish for an atomic agave. The fate of Granite. He continued on as president for as many years, before finally stepping down. Starting the tradition of presidential term limits instead of serving for life that had become the way of life in the Enclave. Many asked him for him not to, but the president remained adamant. In part it was his old age, while the rest was a decline in mental faculties due to the years of service to his nation. For a full life of service to the American people, Granite was given the title of American of the Century, but finally retiring to a modest abode north of Arroyo overlooking the Pacific Ocean. It's the American dream, and the fate of the Enclave. And what of them? The pre-war specter that was the U.S. government that hoped to bring back the United States to the American shores? President Grant has dropped a bomb show on his nation by revealing the crimes of the Enclave to the public. An independent commission was formed known as the Calhoun Commission after its chief, Bill Calhoun, to investigate the allegations. The commission was found not only were the Enclave's crimes clear as day, but also uncovered evidence of human rights abuses by the pre-war United States government. Well, in the short term, the scandalous report shattered the United States' legitimacy and led to mass protests, in the long term it helped build a healthier America. President Granite's actions set the precedence for transparency. Gone were the days when the government could conduct shady experiments on their own citizens. Were we really the bad guys? Special thanks to Brown Dog 921 and Reddit for inspiration behind this idea. Fate of Arcade Ganon. 
Ganon's mother fled from Navarro after the fall of the oil rig, but Ganon returned to the Enclave when Granite was elected. He was one of the many who put their hopes in the dreams of a better world and found his faith justified. Ganon would serve as mayor of New Vegas for two terms before retiring to practice medicine in Freeside. He would continue to complain that his partner made him carry too much when they went camping until his dying day, so it goes, in American Spring and Nuclear Winter. After the end of the Great War, freedom of speech vanished from the most of America. Would-be despots crushed his centers in the name of security progress or just because he could. Under the Enclave, the First Amendment was restored, and voices silent from the sense of Great War spoke out. Fueled by the dreams of freedom and the economic boon that followed the reuniting the wastes, a new type of music arose which the kids dubbed New World Blues. It's about letting go of your first love because you've met your next. It's about letting go of the past because you've got to enjoy the present, and so it's so popular that everyone's parents hated it. E played part in the USA. Was democracy non-negotiable? House once said if you want to see the fate of democracies, look out of the windows, but House didn't address the fact that the pre-war America was not a democracy. Grant's dream was to restore America at its best, and that meant the land of freedom. Deciding not to seek a fourth term after the war with Chicago, Grant stayed silent during debates over the Brotherhood War, the Hawaiian Conference, and the campaign against the South American Raiders. Those debates, bringing forth millions of voters across the United States, were simply democracy in action. So it goes, and separate or equal. The Enclave belief, once believed that Wastelanders were mutants fit only for extermination, and even many reformers within the Enclave viewed the Wastelanders as if human, second-class citizens. More than one century saw the Wastelanders as human but inferior stuff who needed to be salvaged through genetic testing and other programs to save the American people. Under Granite, America tried to live up to its founding ideals that all men are created equal. Wastelanders, vault dwellers, and Enclave purists all lived together continue the American experiment, and so goes the fate of America. The Great War saw an end to America of old. Snuffed out in the blinding flash of nuclear bombs, the worst of those still who shelter in the vaults for safety were subjected to horrifying experiments at the hands of those who claimed to protect them. Two hundred years later, however, the government had returned to the mainland and entered the Enclave. America was reborn, and the stars and stripes flying high over the land. While it was still a far cry from the America of old, it gave people hope. Where raiders, knights, and barons once tread, saw communities, families, and the first progress in centuries. America had come out of the Great War a little better, but better than it ever had been. As the 20, 20, 30 hundreds closed in, the future had never been brighter. God bless America, and that thus ends the campaign of us playing as the Enclave for now, of course, once again. And like tradition uh, for this campaign, or for every Enclave campaign, I, for the life of me, cannot figure out which focuses that we, we can still do, because it looks like they're pretty much all grayed out, and I thought I did, did, did them all. I could be wrong. I can't do this one, so... I don't know. It's tradition on this channel that I can't figure out. Which one is the last one that we actually can do? But hey, regardless, if the mod developer or developers are watching, thank you for so much for re bringing back uh, 1.31 million manpower. Um, Enclave Reborn through the Redux mod. This is the first time on the channel we're actually playing it. I thoroughly have enjoyed it. I love the additions that the developer has made and help expand it upon the idea. I know the mod is still being worked on, which is fantastic. This Redux is a clear sign of how much the developer and we really love it, but really the developer has done a fantastic job, so fan, fantastic. We'll come back and play as the Pure Shroud, because I wanted to do the Pure Shroud again and see if there's anything else different for the Pure Shroud than uh, we've done in the past, so regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, and the campaign as well. Please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous rest of your day.